In our discussion of equilibrium reactions and equilibrium constants, really all we have left in this chapter is to talk about calculations involving equilibrium reactions. And for that, we often find that something called ice tables come in real handy. Um, let's start simpler, though. If you're simply given, here's an equilibrium reaction, here are the concentrations at equilibrium, what is the equilibrium constant, then it is simply a matter of you calculating the equilibrium constant. The equilibrium constant is symbolized by a capital K. We will often put a little C subscript if we're talking about equilibrium uh, constant in terms of the concentrations. We might put a little P subscript if we're talking about in terms of pressures. But a subscript on the equilibrium constant simply is a way to um, to identify what type of equilibrium constant are you talking about. So this one is a KC. Let's say you're given concentrations at equilibrium. Uh, if the concentrations are already in molarity, then you simply put the numbers in. Um, it always helps to write the formula for the equilibrium constant first. That helps you remember all of your squares and cubes and things like that. And so there is the formula for our equilibrium constant for this particular equilibrium reaction. It'll be products raised to their stoichiometric coefficients divided by reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficients. And again, if you're given numerical values for the concentrations at equilibrium, simply plug the numerical values in for all the concentrations, punch it into your calculator, and hit the equal sign. Now, if you're given moles and volumes, don't forget that you will have to calculate the molarity. Recall from Chem 1, molarity is equal to moles over liters. So you may need to calculate the molarities. It has to be molarities to plug into the equilibrium constant. Otherwise, we do not get the equilibrium constant. Now, in the case where you're not given the equilibrium values, this becomes a little bit more difficult of a question, but it's still not that bad. Hydrogen reacts with iodine vapor to produce hydrogen iodide. We have the same reaction. A student begins the reaction with hydrogen concentration equals 0.348, iodine equals 0.567 molarity. After the reaction establishes equilibrium, the I2's concentration is this. What is the equilibrium constant at this temperature? The numerical information that's given here, the fact that hydrogen is 0.348 molarity, is not at equilibrium. That's where the student begins the reaction. That's his initial amount of hydrogen. This is the initial amount of iodine. The reaction proceeds to establish equilibrium. And once it does that, then we have a, a device to measure the equilibrium concentration of I2, and we find that it's 0.416. So what's going on here is I'm starting the reaction with a certain set of conditions, and then this, this condition is found at equilibrium. I'm not told how much HI I'm starting the reaction with, um, but I would assume in this case that since I am running this reaction, that I'm only putting H2 and I2 in the container. Unless you're told otherwise, you will assume that any products begin the reaction at zero, but then, of course, you're going to produce them as the reaction reaches equilibrium. Notice that this amount at equilibrium is for I2. So that's how much I2 I have left at equilibrium, not HI, although there would be some HI at equilibrium. You'll notice that the amount of I2 is less than it started with because the reaction is proceeding producing some products, and therefore some of the I2 is going away. Here's how we keep track of this. We keep track in something called an ice table. It's called this because our ice table um, has space to put an initial amount, the change in the amount, which you can either write with a C or with a delta symbol, and a, an equilibrium amount. So therefore, we spell out ice, although I almost always just put the change symbol. But this ice table is a way for us to keep track of concentrations. Now, we can put moles or molarities in our ice table. Um, if we're figuring out equilibrium constants, 
we probably want to be in molarity, and so I like to put the big M over here in the upper left-hand corner to indicate that all the numerical values in this table are molarities. And so here are the values that I put in the table. At the beginning of the reaction, H2 is .384. That's the initial .384. That's the initial concentration of H2. The initial I2 is .567 and the initial HI is zero because I don't begin with any in it. At equilibrium, my I2 concentration is 0.416. That numerical value goes down here. As this reaction proceeds, I use up some of my I2 and I produce some HI, but once I use up my I2, I am only left over with .416. So the change for the C, the change in I2 is the difference between these two numerical values. The change is .567 minus .416. So this reaction consumed .151 molarity, moles per liter. This is a moles, but it's a moles per liter. Now, stoichiometrically, I can now calculate everything on the change row using stoichiometry. If this reaction proceeds such that 0.151 moles per liter of I2 are used up, how many moles of H2 are used up? Well, that's a moles to moles conversion between I2 and H2 happens to be a one-to-one -one stoichiometry because of the balancing coefficients. So that means .151 moles per liter of, I, of H2 are also used up. I am writing negative signs here because that amount is being used up. That means the equilibrium amount of H2 is .348 minus .151 or 0 0.197 moles per liter is left. For HI, I can calculate how much HI is produced starting with my .151 moles per liter of I2. The stoichiometry now for the I2 to HI conversion is 2 to 1. .302 moles per liter of HI are produced. In this case, they are produced. This is a positive numerical value. I am using up reactants, I am producing products, and so at equilibrium, the amount of HI is .302 moles per liter. That's the molarity of it. Now I have all of my equilibrium values, and I can plug them into my equilibrium constant. Punch these into my calculator and write my answer. Watch your sig figs. Looks like I need three sig figs, so how about my equilibrium constant is 1.11. This problem gets a little trickier, depending again on how it's asked, but the basics are to use this ice table to keep track of what's going on in your reaction in order to solve for your equilibrium constant.